do a little introduction, then we'll just start. All right, man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show, and we got my thirtieth guest on on my show here today. It's kind of cool because it's kind of a milestone, more or less. If anything, I'd say thirty guests uh, for uh, you know for doing one season of interviews so far. This guy is, is a legend. Beyond, beyond belief, uh, he has done a lot of different films uh, in the 70s, 80s, as well as the 90s, and he's done a lot of voiceover work. My friend, Eddie Deason, how's it going? My pleasure. My pleasure, Sean. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, it's good to talk to you, too. I... We're, we're pals from Facebook. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a pleasure to, to finally get a chance to speak to you. Uh, I'm sorry that it was late, a little late notice, but... Uh, no, but... it was my fault, Sean. You know, I was out goofing around, and then I had to meet Barry Pearl of Grease. He, they're doing a, a theater production of Grease, Barry and Kelly Ward, and they, I had to sign all these T-shirts at Starbucks, so that's why I was a little late getting home. Oh, we have to find a million teachers to get to auction them off to get money for their theater. Okay, well that's kind of yeah. cool that you're you're helping with that. Do you do a lot oh, of charity work? Oh, Barry. Do you do you do a lot of charity work at all? Uh, to be honest, no, not really. But this is just something to help Barry out. Okay. Was he yeah. like? Did he have something to do with Greece at all? Or yeah, he was one of the guys that one of the T birds. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm just happy that we can do this, and uh, uh, so. So, uh, you've been, well, you're known for doing a lot of voice work as well as, uh, being like in Greece and Greece 2 and, and all that. One of the movies that I, that I liked that you were in was, uh, Midnight Madness. I actually have a copy of that on DVD. Oh, uh, yeah, Michael J. Fox's first film. Yeah. Uh, yeah. how was that experience for you, to be a part of something so big? Uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't like it that much. It was why I love Michael. I met Pee Wee Herman there. I think it was, like, maybe his first or second film. He was a great guy. Some of the cast members I didn't like, that was one of the rare films some of the cast members I didn't like. But uh, most of them were very nice. Yeah. yeah I won't get into details of her name. <laughs> but, uh, it, was, it was not my happiest experience. Okay. Well, it, yeah. seemed, it seemed like a great... it, was, it was a funny film. It's, as far as just laughs on the screen, it's a cut above. I think it's better than most. Yeah. yeah, it's a good cable film. And and I think uh, the story alone, you know, like playing a like this little like night game or whatever to to find clues to to, to lead to the what what they led to at, at the end of the movie. I thought it was a pretty good concept because you don't see that type of film around nowadays. That's true. Good point. You're right. And uh, I did one kind of like that called Million Dollar Mystery. There was another like Mad Mad World thing where they gave away a treasure, you know, and uh, okay. kind of like that. Except they, that one, they actually gave away the million dollars and they lost money on it. Yeah, that's a good way to look at a mad, mad, mad world. That's that'd be a good way to, to kind of look at that for. Uh, yeah, it was kind of they were both similar to that. I think maybe they were derived from mad, mad, mad world, both of them. But, <laughs> you know, not remotely as good. That's one of the great movies ever. So uh, you you got into acting. Uh, <laughs> what, what what did you start? What did you start actually get into uh, the acting bug? Let's see. I was uh, I did Grease at twenty. I, I left home at eighteen. To be honest, I couldn't do anything else. I would, it was either that. My dad was going to buy me a Dairy Quarrel, and I didn't want to do that. So I just I came out of ways, you know. I wanted to be a Camille. I got a few breaks. Yeah. yeah I was luckier than most. And then your, your fir- I was looking at your Wikipedia page, and it says your first film that you did was a movie called Laser Blast. Laser Blast was actually, yeah. Actually, Grease was the first, but Laser Blast was released first. Okay. Grease was the first one I was ever in, but Laser Blast was released March 1st of 78, and Greece didn't come out until June 78, it was my second. Okay, How, what, what was uh, Laser Blast about? Laser Blast was, uh, um, it was a sci-fi thing, it wasn't actually a comedy per se, and I remember I get blown up in a car, there there was a great episode, Sean, of, do you remember the show Mystery Science Theater? Uh, a little they bit, joke? a little yeah, bit. They did, yeah, they, they do satires of movies, and oh. they had that, they had, uh, it was on there, and it was actually the funniest thing, <laughs> they did the movie on there, they satirized it, I get blown up in a car, I know, and stuff like that, and the, the one kid, Kim Milford, uh, was the star, I remember, and uh, I remember I had a crush on the script girl, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the stranger films I did. So did you did you ever figure that, uh, that that would be, like, technically your first movie, or technically your second movie that you'd ever do in your, to start no, your career? You know, Sean, you never know. You never know in the business. You plan, and you plan, and it, 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 it's kind of like life, you know, it's so capricious. You try to plan things, and, you know, like they say, God laughs. You say, I'm going to do this and this and this, but you, you take what's offered. You know, I, I left out with Grease was my first film, you know, and then the other ones, they just came up when they did. Oh, yeah. And it, it seems like you you were good friends with uh, Robert Zemeckis, because I see here you did a couple of his films as well. Yeah, he's wonderful. My favorite director. I, wanna, I, I wanna yeah. want to hold your hand in 1941. <laughs> yeah, I want to hold your hand was his first film, and that was the first film Steven Spielberg ever produced. Jeez. That's the work on that. That was really fun. 
Love that. Maybe it's the best film I ever did because I, I kind of play myself a Beatles fan. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, I see that on your Facebook. Uh, you you always uh, giving uh, people some trivia, some trivia for Beatles uh, information and stuff. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I live for the Beatles. I love the Beatles. Yeah, Beatles and what? Well, I think Elvis is another love of yours, right? Elvis, I love. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> hey, I've, I've been paying attention to you with your little updates on what you. I'm a big fan. I people enjoy your uh, quotes and your uh, information that you. Uh, that you were able to give, anyway. Oh, yeah. Well, they're wonderful. I, I've met so many nice people on book. I scoffed at it for years, Sean. I, I didn't know what it was like. And I go, oh, I don't want to go on that corny thing and all. And I went on and I met so many wonderful people there. I've actually great people on there. One or two, you know, were trouble. But, you know, 99% of them are just great. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to find you because, you know, uh, I, I've known about you for a long, long time, and I've, and I've seen a lot, majority of your work. There's still a lot that I haven't seen that I'm just getting familiar with that, that's new to me, that's, been, that, that's probably been out for like 30 years, that's just uh, been an introduction to me. But uh, it's, it's really cool just to know that you that you're not just known for just the certain things that I thought you were known for, that you've done a lot of other films as well as TV shows and stuff like that. It's amazing, your, your body of work oh thank you thanks very much yeah I've, I've been lucky yeah i'd say so i mean you, you you've been really lucky to to uh to do a lot of great films and, and see that's what i like about you know stuff from like the 70s and the 80s you know back in those days and even in the 90s when you watch a film you know it, it was so interesting to, to see what type of uh whether it be it didn't have, actually have to be a big blockbuster in order to be perfect it, uh, even these independent films were just as good as as the big blockbusters i thought Totally, I agree. Sometimes you'll find a low-budget film, you'll find it's a great treasure. And then you'll see the other, you know, Sean, you'll see this $200 million film, and you, you forget it the next day, you know. Yeah. And you'll find this little low-budget film, and it's like it's a movie you remember all your life. <laughs> uh, a year ago, I, I had the, the privilege of going to uh, a town called Astoria, Oregon. I went on a trip. It was my second time to the West Coast, and uh, I got to hang out and, and be a part of the film. Uh, well, not the film, but like my, uh, uh, the Goonies were filmed in Astoria, Oregon. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and and I got to see the locations of uh, the house, you know, the Goonie house and the jail right. and everything. And it's it just so cool because that town alone looked exactly like it did when uh, when the movies were being filmed there. Right. So that, very cool. Yeah. So that's what I like about that style. I I've always been big on uh, movies from the from the seventies and eighties. I'm only twenty nine years old, so I was born oh, you're a kid. Yeah. You had a whole career ahead, Sean. <laughs> what do you plan on, Sean? What do you want to do with your life? Well, uh, I you, you know work in the movie industry or what? I I would love to if uh, if, if given that opportunity. I, I see. I, I live in Minnesota, northern Minnesota, around here. To find something like that, you'd have to go to Minneapolis, and I don't I don't have you know like a whole lot of money myself to just trap just to say I'm going to go to the cities and just see if I can find a a a, a role somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. I, and it's kind of troublesome. Right now, I work in a hotel, and yeah, they don't really make that much. Understand? Yeah. Well, you never know. Life life is funny. Take strange twists and turns. You know, it might happen. Maybe you might turn around some. Yeah. Crazy. But with you, I mean, you you start Cumberland, Cumberland, Maryland, I believe you said yeah. that's your ho hometown exactly. area. And, and so it's kind of cool that you could go from a journey. Because how far were you from like New York? New York got actually closer, and I would almost went to New York, but I decided on LA instead. But I, we were within uh, miles or so in New York, or fifty miles. I know we used to drive to New York over the summer. I saw a lot of Broadway shows growing up. I always loved. It. Was that kind of like inspiration a little bit towards your acting career, kind of? Not really. No, I just, uh, I wanted to get away from my dad. Dad and I didn't get along. Okay. Uh, and, you know, just other stuff like that. And I, I wanted to be, I mean, I wanted to try it. It was a different time, you know. It was more open. I think it's much harder to get in the door now, you know, than it was then. It was kind of more open then. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have been telling me, a lot of the other celebrities that I've talked to, that, that nowadays it is a lot harder because uh, even with my YouTube channel, you know, alone, that, you know, in order to really get a whole lot of views or whatever, you either have to have a big fan base or, or a big old network to follow you to see that to, to know that you're getting you know the the views and, and comments that you want to get. And right. but now it's like it's so tough because I don't have a big following. I'm just you know I got maybe two thousand subscribers on YouTube and and I know people that uh, that have half a million to a million subscribers and I, I don't right. know what the trick is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a different market, but I think it's always been tough. You know, it's always been a tough business, but. You know, you keep you know, you persevere, you keep going, and you keep trying. You know, things will happen. Yeah. 
And, and I've always, you know, my, myself, I, I, I used to be a radio DJ, and, and I, I did it for about a good six or seven years at the local college, and I got to volunteer and stuff, and, and that was that was cool. That at least told me that at least around here there was an opportunity to, to show my talents, if anything, uh, around the area anyway, uh, rather than just being a farmer or anything like that. <laughs> right. But uh, so uh, what? So what other movies are, are are notable to you that that you really like? If you could go back and do them again, you would you go back in a heartbeat. That I would do my own films to them again. Yeah, or yeah, whatever films that you've done that that were really close to you, that really were near to dear. Besides, uh, like Greece or Greece Two. Well, I, I think Polar Express was Polar Express is good because I got to work with Bob the Mex is my favorite director. Yep. He remembered me from I went to Hobie and he wrote me into Polar Express. And then working with Tom Hanks, he was always my favorite actor. So I got to work with him, so that was really lucky. And that was kind of like my last really good film. Actually, my last major film at all. Uh -huh. So that was like, that was a wonderful experience. And I think it turned out good. It's kind of a, a Christmas classic, you know. People watch it at Christmas now. So that's a special one to me. Grease will always be such because it was my first. Yep. You know, and also, and also John Travolta, his kindness. Like Tom Hanks, he just spit up because he was such a nice guy. <laughs> so I'll always remember that experience. And the whole cast of Grease was wonderful. Everybody was great. Yeah, it seemed like that too. You know, the funny thing about Greece is what a lot of people don't realize, and, and I'm sure you you've you've talked about this before in other interviews that Greece was kind of a dirty movie in a way, or, or at least the songs were. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> you know what, Sean? They ha we went to okay, I did it, and then they had the, they re-released it with the words for the song. <laughs> I never realized how dirty they are. Greece <laughs> Lightning, man, you listen to those words or Google the word. It's a very dirty song. Go, jeez, I didn't know that all these years. <laughs> and there's, there's some gnarly stuff there. I kind of realized that too after listening to the soundtrack. I was like, "Wow, this actually is a pretty dirty, dirty musical." And, and, and so you could probably just listen to it. See, I didn't know until I got the words. Yeah. So I saw the words actually printed out. No, I had the words printed on screen, and I thought, yeah. oh "My God, is that what everybody's singing?" Yeah. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what. I guess back in those days, they probably didn't think people would get the idea of that it was a, a dirty, dirty type of movie. Exactly. They probably thought they could slip it through. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that's what Alan and them were thinking. I don't know. Because, uh, you know, I, I see, like, the, there's some schools and stuff that, that uh, take it to, to, like, a musical level that do that uh, redo the play as a musical for their local schools and stuff. But I'm right. sure I'm sure they clean it up uh, uh, rather than how they do it in the movie. I'm sure. Right. With parents coming in, yeah, I think <laughs> they would definitely clean it up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and you were talking about the Polar Express. I think I, I also have that DVD. And yes, I, I, I have watched that around Christmas time. I was really I was really fond of that movie. I, I watched it on my surround sound because that's the type of movie you got to have surround sound for. You can't just watch it on a regular TV because right. you're, you're you're missing out on so much if you don't have a surround sound system. You're right. I think you're right. Because first thing I don't have, but I thought it after it came out. They showed it one, I think like the next year they showed it in TV and we got to put the glasses on and watch it, you know, and it was uh -huh. really cool to see it out way. That's the way it should be seen. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, one question I've always had, and, uh, and you're the first person that I've uh, always, or you're the first person I'm asking this question to, so this is kind of new to me, but something I've always wanted to ask. When, when you got, get done doing a movie, and the movie, it takes a little while for it to come out, and then once it's come out on Blu-ray or DVD, now, do you get a copy, do they, the company send you a copy of that movie, or do you have no, to go and I've actually buy it yourself? I think they would. I think if you called them and said that, you know, they probably would, but we did Grease when Grease was re-released, you know, with the words. They yep. gave us, like, about 20 copies. They're long, you know, they're long gone. I've given them out, but, yeah, they gave us copies then. But when it first comes out, no, there's, they don't necessarily give you a copy now. Oh, Although, okay. remember, most of my films were done, 10 years or more ago, so it was kind of before the big DVD age. They might do yeah. it now, I don't know, but as far as me, no, they never gave VHS or anything now. Yeah, because I've always kind of wondered about that, because you wonder, like, even if you're a big actor or something like that, who, who has done a lot of films, like, say you're Nicolas Cage, and you've done, like, every movie in the in the book, pretty much, and right. and, and then I kind of wonder how it is for, like, him, if they if they say, hey, you want to release, you want a copy of your movie on Blu-ray or DVD or whatever, well, here you go, or... Right, I don't I'm know. Sure, yeah, for somebody <laughs> like that, I'm sure they would do it. <laughs> yeah, unequivocally. And, and, and you've also done a lot of voiceover work, too. I, I was really impressed. Uh, I actually own uh, the first season of Dexter's Laboratory on DVD, and you did oh, the voice yeah. of Mandark. Do you have that, really? <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, cool. I, I love that show. Colette Sunderman was my, was my favorite animation director. She directed most of those. I, I think she directed all my episodes, and she's the best animation director. She's like the Bob's and of animation for me. <laughs> wow. I love working with her. 
Yeah, because I, I, I kind of missed that cartoon. It's kind of it, it lasted. It had a pretty good run, but it's it, it's yeah. uh, hard to find nowadays. That's why I had to get the DVD of it yeah, because you, you don't see, you it on see TV. them on YouTube. You can see them around the internet. But you're right. I wish it had gone on longer. That show was so much fun. I loved it. And let's see, I'm, I'm kind of going to your Wikipedia page because that's how I'm learning a lot more about you, too, as we're doing the interview, not just what I know already. You also, it looks like you've done uh, some stuff with the Weird Al show. Yeah, I was the wall, the man in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy wrote a line to Al Yankovic, a very nice guy, so he wrote me a man in the wall so I could just read my lines so we'd have to memorize him. <laughs> I was the man in the wall. <laughs> I'm sure he was a trip to work with, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, he's a very nice guy, wonderful, nice guy. And you did uh, you did the voice of Oswald in Johnny Bravo? Uh, uh, in one episode, yeah. One episode, we, yes. We were three guys. I did that with Dan Castellaneta. Okay. Homer Simpson. I did oh, wow. Lee Harvey and Oswald. It was a funny episode, three of us. <laughs> we were a team, Lee Harvey and Oswald. And it was Harvey, I think, and I think Dan was Oswald. Oh, jeez. No, I was Oswald. Dan was Harvey, I think. Another guy was Lee. It was fun. <laughs> Maybe that inspired Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Who knows? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Good point, I wonder. Yeah, hey, you never know. You never know. Yeah. And, and you know, there, there was this recently uh, something that I was reading on, uh, let's see, uh, I mean, that somebody did about you called I Love You, Eddie Deason. How yeah, that's a short film. Yeah, what was that all about? A little bit in that at the end. Okay. My friend Sherry Matson wrote it. She produced it. She stars in it. It's like her thing. It's a short film, and it came out last year. So that was like about the only work I did last year. It was fun. Oh. It was great to get in front of the camera again. Yeah. So, I mean, do you miss just uh, not working as much, or what do you do in your start? Honest, Sean, yeah, I, I do miss it, but, you know, I, I realize, you know, how tough showbiz is. You know, we're all... Yeah. Everybody, if you get any jobs, you're lucky, period, you know. There's so much supply and demand, so I've been very lucky. But, yeah, I miss the busy days. You know, I used to do three films a year in the old days, you know. Turned down a film because I was so busy, and you know, now it's just, it's different. I'm older now, it's kind of a different world. Yeah. But I definitely miss working so much. But, uh, but it, it'd be kind of cool for you just to, to go back in the business anyway, because of the fact that, you know, you're you're one of those legendary character actors, you know. you Even if you were a main star in a couple movies, you're still more or less a character actor. You know, that's where you've been pretty much your whole whole career. And, uh, you know, you, you figured there'd be, like, some work out there with all these movies that are coming out and everything that somebody would say, hey, uh, who can we use for a good uh, character actor, voice work guy? Hey, let's I talk know. to Eddie Deason. I'm sure he's available. I <laughs> know. My friends say that. I wish it would happen. Maybe <laughs> one of these days, somebody will think, you know, think oh, my God, Eddie Deason, let's get him. Yeah, you know, good idea. So what do you think about the movie industry today compared to 30 years ago? Well, let's see. It, it's like it's more high budget now. You know, it's, it's kind of a different thing budget-wise. When we, you know, we did like I Want to Hold Your Hand, I think it was like $0.5 million, you know? Uh-huh. So Grease we did for $6 million. Jeez. You're not going to see that anymore. You know, Grease was a studio film. It was low budget, but it was a Paramount film. You're not going to see any film for below $50 million now. So that's different. You know, there's a lot more people in the business. You know, there's so many more people in the business. Not as wide open, not as easy to get into, you know. Yeah. But uh, there's still good stuff coming out, you know. There's always, there's always creative people. There's always new good stuff coming out, you know. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, it's always interesting now because it seems like nowadays uh, with, with most movies, they're all based on special effects compared to right, like 30 years ago. Thing. Compared but to 30 years what? ago where there wasn't like that. You know what, Sean? Also, I, I think Polar Express contributed to that. Polar Express was like the first big 3D film in a long, long time. There hadn't been one in years, and then I think Polar Express was pretty successful. It was interesting. Not like every other film's 3D. You see it all the time. I think Polar Express started that. Yeah, I, I Not remember. Not to brag, but I, I just think it's a fact. <laughs> yeah, and, and now they, it seems like with 3D, they're making everything 3D now. Exactly. And, and, and it's, and it's 3D not just all over the place. Yeah, and it's not and just with the regular red and blue. Uh, it's actually with like the, gla- the actual glasses now, the fancy glasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Different world. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it like for you living in Hollywood now? How long have you lived in Hollywood for? I have been here. I came out after high school graduation. I was 18, so it's been 37 years. I'm 55 now. Uh-huh. So it's been a long haul out here, a very long time. A lot different than uh, when you first got arrived, I'm sure. Well, a little bit. I, I think, yeah, let's see. There used to be hookers on the streets when I came out. <laughs> I came out. They would line the streets. There were, like, hookers. There were girls in the window. Now that, you know, AIDS has come, you know. Yeah. So I think AIDS changed that. Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah, that's kind of different. Yeah. Uh, it's more expensive to live. You know, when I first came out of my apartment, it was $100, you know. Yeah. So it was different money-wise. You know, money's so much it's different now that way, too. Yeah. I never could drive, so I would still take the bus around and get rides with friends. I'd bum rides. Oh, sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. No, uh, you know, so uh, it's kind of interesting to learn about that because uh, I've never been to that that uh, never been to California before. Like I said, the mm-hmm. further I've been to West Coast is Oregon, and that's as far as I've ever gone. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure you know because I have a few people that are friends of mine that actually live in California, like San Diego, and Los Angeles, and I always mm-hmm. kind of wonder what like a normal day in Los. You know, you, you figure things would be like I know gas is a lot more expensive over there than it is over here. Mm-hmm. Even though right now it's like three eighty nine a gallon over here. I'm sure it's like five bucks over there, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, I think it is. I think it is, actually. It's, it's just, my friends tell me, it's, it's not part of my world, but my friends tell me it's really expensive now. Yeah. I think it's like 427 out here, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just, you know, the world definitely has changed, but it's but it's nice to know that there's still people around that uh, never forget where they come from, never forget their roots, and never forget you know what brought them to the dance. And you're one of those people that I I can definitely say that has never forgotten his roots. You know, when it comes no. to films well, and thank, stuff. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Yeah, God. yeah, no problem. And I'm happy that we got to do this uh, little interview. Uh, it's, it's an honor to to talk to you because. Uh, a lot of people will probably be just that I'm talking to you, I would say. Oh, totally my <laughs> pleasure. You're a wonderful guy. And you get your address. I'll send you a picture. Hey, just, uh, I said to it, uh, the address to you before I uh, called you. It's already on uh, already at your inbox there. Excellent. Okay, and I don't know if you ever come out to L.A., but I'm going to be signing at uh, the Hollywood Collector Show in April if you ever get out. I'd love to meet you in person. It's yeah, it'd be, it'd be kind of fun. Or if you ever do, uh, if you ever get like a Skype and a webcam, we could always do like a video interview too if you ever want to. Exactly. Yeah, it'd be my pleasure. All right. Well, thanks for the interview, and uh, you take care, my friend. Thank you so much, John. Have a great day. You too. Bye. And that was Eddie Deason, guest number thirty of Frankie Slauson Show, and. It's kind of cool, you know, just to uh, have the honor and the chance to talk to a voice talent and an act, acting talent and uh, just somebody who uh, has definitely uh, has definitely uh, done a lot for the business. And it's, you know, I hope, he, hope we hear more about him in the future, you know, with uh, some roles or even just some independent roles. Because if you go on his Wikipedia, he's he's done a lot of different, uh, a lot of different films and stuff that... Uh, uh, you probably never even heard of, let alone seen that, but are, are around, and I definitely would definitely want to look at some of these as well. So anyway, I'm Frankie Slauson, and we'll see you again for another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show. And take care. Bye bye. <laughs>